Hello, I am Jonas from VHDLWiz.com and today I'm going to show you two ways that you can use the stable attribute in VHDL to check that a signal has remained stable, meaning that its value hasn't changed for some time period prior to this point in the simulation. Because stable is what's called an attribute, it's kind of like a function call attached to a signal object and when you call it you specify a parameter which is a time value and then the function call will return true or false. It will return true if there has been an event, meaning that the signal has changed prior to this time in the simulation, and it will return false if it has remained stable. I'm going to show you how we can use it to verify setup times, for example. So I'm using this SPI master module, which I am developing for the VHDL with membership because I'm creating a 13 lessons tutorial series about creating an SPI master module. And this is part of the test bench. So the output from the SPI master is chip select and S clock. So we're going to focus on these two signals and we can see the device in the test is uh, changing them. But what I want to check at this point is that after the falling edge of chip select, the S clock doesn't change too fast because according to the data sheet of the chip we are communicating with, this time period should be at least some minimum time. And we can use the stable attribute to check that in VHDL. So I've created a new verification component here. This is part of the test bench. It just takes in the chip select and the S clock from the device in the test. This is instantiated in the test bench. So I'm going to create a new process here to check that using the stable attribute. Just create an empty process with no sensitivity list. And then we're going to wait until the falling edge of S clock, like that. So after this line of code, we are going to be at this point in the simulation, the falling edge of S clock. And then we're going to look back in time on the CS signal and see, has it remained stable for a given time? And to do that, I'm going to use an assert statement, assert false, or assert that CS attribute stable. So now I'm using the stable attribute has remained stable, for example, for 300 nanoseconds. And if that's not true, we're going to print the message. S clock falling edge too close to CS falling edge, for example. So what's going to happen now is that we're going to wait until the falling edge of S clock, and then we're going to look at CS, has it remained stable by using this stable attribute for 300 nanoseconds prior to that point. So let's save this and recompile, rerun the simulation. And there was some error here, failure, S clock falling edge too close to CS falling edge. So the assert statement kicked in and stopped the simulation. And let's have a look at the waveform. It stopped at the first falling edge because I said 300 nanoseconds and that's somewhere around here. So it has changed at this time. But let's say that it's not 300 nanoseconds, it's going to be 10 nanoseconds, I think was the value. Doesn't matter, this is just a demo, so I'm going to save this and see if it will pass. Because 10 nanoseconds prior to that point is going to be around here, so that's going to be enough. So let's recompile now and rerun that test bench and see if it will pass. Test OK, so it seems that we got past that point. And we did, the test bench has run all the way until the end, and it didn't stop on any of these events where CS is falling and then S clock. So you see, it's easy to use stable to check that the signal has remained stable prior to some time. So I'm going to show you another example, which is a bit more tricky, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So I want to check now the pulse duration of this CS pulse. So there's also a requirement in the data sheet for the module I'm communicating with that the pulse, the high period of CS has to be a certain time. From here to there has to be a certain time. It has to be high for a minimum time duration. So we're going to check that as well. It's only the CS signal, not the S clock. We're just looking at the CS signal right now. So let's try to do the same procedure here as we did. We're going to create a new process. And then we're going to wait until the falling edge of CS, of chip select. And then when we are at this point, 
in the process. That's going to be here on the falling edge of CS. And then we're going to look back in time when was the last time CS changed. And it has to be a minimum time. So let's try to do that. We're going to use the same method here. Assert failure if CS attribute stable if it has not been stable for 300 nanoseconds. And then we can write some message if that is not true. CS pulls too short. Save this and let's try it out in Molsim. Recompile and rerun the test bench. CS pulls too short. Okay, so it happened at a point that I didn't expect it happened here. The first event that CS is falling, because 300 nanoseconds prior to this is somewhere around here, I think. So I don't really understand this. Let's try to shorten this time to 10 nanoseconds. I think that is closer to the real minimum time in the data sheet. I'm not sure. doesn't matter. This is just a demo. So let's try it again. So it should pass now if we lower it to 10 nanoseconds, right? But still, CS pulls too short. How about if we set it to 0 nanoseconds, meaning that it shouldn't have to be stable at all? Let's try that out. But it is still failing, even with 0 nanoseconds. So what is going on here? I'm going to tell you what is going on. So we are waiting until the falling edge of CS, and then we are checking has it remained stable for some time prior to that? But at this point, right here, it's changing at this exact moment in this delta cycle. So stable will never return true because it has just changed. There's no minimum time that it hasn't changed for because it's changing exactly when we are checking it, right? We are waiting until falling edge, so then it's changing. And then we are checking has it remained stable, but it just changed prior to that on the previous line in our process. So how are we going to overcome that problem? We are changing CS and then we're checking is it stable, but it's changing at that exact delta cycle. But if we had a version of CS that was delayed by one delta cycle, then that signal wouldn't have changed until the next delta cycle. So we could use that one to check. I'm going to show you what I mean. So we're going to create a new signal here, a copy of CS signal. Let's name it CS underscore delta, for example. And then I'm going to assign to CS delta here, CS underscore delta, assign to it from CS. So now we are creating a copy. In simulation time, this signal will have the exact same behavior as CS. So it's not delayed in simulation time, but it is delayed by one delta cycle because this assignment creates one delta cycle delay. And then we can use this CS delta here to check the stable time because at the exact time that CS has the falling edge, it will also trigger this process. So in the next delta cycle, this signal will change. But when we are at this assert statement, it hasn't changed yet. So we can use CS delta here to check that CS has been stable prior to that point. So for example, let's change it to 10 nanoseconds and rerun the simulation now and see if it will pass. And it does, it runs through the full simulation, so it didn't stop, it worked. So let's try to change this to something larger, 300 nanoseconds, for example, and see that it stops. So that should be more than the pulse in the waveform, so it should stop now. Should detect that the CS pulse is shorter than 300 nanoseconds. And it did, CS pulse too short. It stopped at the falling edge of CS because it detected using this CS delta signal that CS had changed less than 300 nanoseconds prior to this time in simulation. I often use this neat trick to verify the pulse duration of a signal by using the stable attribute and a delta cycle delayed version of that signal. So you see, delta cycles are your friend and it's not even difficult to understand if you know how they work. And by the way, in the VHDL's membership portal, I have a tutorial series about delta cycles, delta cycles in depth, where you can learn how inter-process communication works in VHDL. And I've also got this SPI master tutorial that I'm releasing next week in the membership portal. It is for creating an SPI master that reads ADC data from an external ADC chip. So we're going to use it to read the ambient light sensor 
from an ambient light sensor board from Digilent for using an FPGA. If you're interested in the VSJOS membership, click the link below. And thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope that you liked it. If you have any questions, just put them in the comment section below this video.